In this lecture, we will cover the power distribution load study, based on load characteristics, that we have defined in the previous section of this chapter. Which is, the second section, in the load characteristics chapter. Recall that, the load is at the end of, or downstream, the distribution network, and the load is usually fed from a distribution substation, through a distribution feeder. The load study is essential, for sizing the distribution feeders, and the equipment in the distribution substation, such as, the distribution transformers, and protection devices. It is worth noting that, in most cases, the load that the distribution feeder serves, will usually display, a relatively smoothed demand curve. So, the feeder demand curve, usually does not display any of the abrupt changes, in demand of an individual customer's demand curve. The simple explanation for this, is that, the feeder serves several hundred customers, and when one customer is turning off a light bulb, then another customer may be turning on another light bulb. Therefore, the main distribution feeder, will not experience any significant change in the load. This graph shows, an example of a distribution feeder, 15 minutes demand curve per day. Note that, the changes in the demand are not abrupt, but rather smooth. In the analysis of a distribution feeder, load data will have to be specified. The data provided will depend upon, how detailed the feeder is to be modeled, and the availability of customer load data. The most comprehensive model of a feeder, will represent every distribution transformer. Then, the load allocated to each transformer needs to be determined. Based on the previous definitions, the diversity factor, FD, is the ratio of the maximum non-coincident demand, to the maximum diversified demand. When diversity factor is available, then it is possible to determine the maximum diversified demand of a group of customers, such as those served by a distribution transformer. So, the maximum diversified demand can be computed by Calculating the ratio of the maximum non-coincident demand to the diversity factor. Hence, this maximum diversified demand becomes the allocated load for the transformer, after dividing the kilowatt demand, by the average power factor of the total load. Usually, the maximum demand of individual customers will be known, either from metering, or from a knowledge of the energy consumed by the customer. Some utility companies, will perform a load survey of similar customers, in order to determine, the relationship between the energy consumption in kilowatt hour, and the maximum kilowatts demand. At the end of the survey period, the maximum demand versus kilowatt hour, for each customer, can be plotted on a common graph. Linear regression is used, to determine the equation of a straight line, that gives the kilowatt demand as a function of kilowatt hour. Let take an example where, a single phase lateral provides service to three distribution transformers, T1, T2, and T3, as shown in the below distribution system.
the energy in kilowatt hour that is consumed by each customer, during a month, is known and is provided in the following tables. A load survey has been conducted for customers in this class, and it has been found that, the customer 15 mute maximum kilowatt demand is given by, this equation. For each transformer, determine the 15 minute non-coincident maximum kilowatt demand. Using the diversity factor table, given in next slide, determine the 15 minute maximum diversified kilowatt demand. Finally, determine the 15 minute non-coincident maximum kilowatt demand, and 15 minute maximum diversified kilowatt demand, for each of the line segments. This table provides the diversity factors versus the number of customers. To answer the first question, we need to calculate each customer 15 minute maximum kilowatt demand, based on the given equation. Thus, the following table can be constructed. For instance, for customer 1, on transformer T1, the recorded energy consumption is 1523 kilowatt hour, which according to the given equation, gives a maximum demand of 12.4 kilowatts. Following the same procedure for all customers, and using the given equation, the last column of the table can be easily constructed. To find the maximum demand on a transformer, we just sum the maximum demands of all consumers connected to the transformer. And for the feeders, we sum the maximum demands of the transformers fed by the feeder. Now, using the diversity factors, given in the table, and based on the number of customers fed by each feeder and transformer, we can determine the maximum diversified demand flowing down in each feeder and transformer, as follows. For instance, considering feeder between N1 and N2, the number of customers is 18 and the corresponding diversity factor is 2.86. The maximum load is the sum of maximum demands on all three transformers, which is equal to 265.5 kW. Thus the maximum diversified demand is 265.5 divided by 2.86, which is equal to 92.8 kW. The same procedure, is followed to determine the maximum diversified demands for the other two feeders between N2 and N3 and between N3 to N4. For the transformers, and considering for example T1, we have five customers, which gives a diversity factor FD of 2.2. Since the maximum demand of the five customers together is 66.6 .6 kW, the maximum diversified demand is determined as the ratio 66.6 .6 to 2.2 which equals 30.3 kW. The same procedure, is followed to determine the maximum diversified demands for the other transformers T2 and T3. This figure, summarizes all calculated values and shows also how they were calculated. Let's check if Kirchhoff current law is obeyed or not. If it is not obeyed, then, why is that? This example demonstrates that Kirchhoff's current law is not obeyed, when the maximum diversified demands are used as the load flowing through the line segments, and through the transformers. At node N1, the maximum diversified demand, flowing down the line segment N1 N2, is 92.9 .9 kilowatts, and the maximum diversified demand, flowing through transformer T1, is 30.3 kilowatts. KCL would then predict that, 
the maximum diversified demand flowing down line segment N2 N3, would be the difference of these, or 62.6 kilowatts. However, the calculations for the maximum diversified demand in that segment, were computed to be 72.6 kilowatts, which is different. The explanation is that, the maximum diversified demands for the line segments and transformers, don't necessarily occur at the same time. At the time that line segment N2 N3 is experiencing its maximum diversified demand, line segment N1 N2, and transformer T1, are not at their maximum values. All what can be said is that, at the time segment N2 N3 is experiencing its maximum diversified demand, the difference between the actual demand on line segment N1 N2, and the demand of transformer T1, will be 72.6 kilowatts, and not 62.6 kilowatts. Now, you are given the following practice exercise on load study, that you need to solve by yourself, in order to test your understanding and learning, of this part of load study. At the end of a power distribution system, a certain feeder supplies three distribution transformers, each one supplying a group of customers whose connected load are listed as follows. For instance, load A, on transformer 1, is a combination of 5 kilowatts lighting load, and 10 horsepower motor load. So, the horsepower load is for motors, and we assume a similar efficiency of 72%, for all motors. Use the factors, given in the table in next slide, and predict the maximum demand on the main feeder. This table on the right hand side, gives the typical demand and diversity factors, for different types of consumers. You will need some of these factors, that apply to this example of load study, in order to predict the maximum demand on the main feeder. The final answer should be, 37.64 kilowatts. This video, that is available on YouTube, at the link shown below, gives one good example of electrical load calculation. This is the end of this lecture. Hope that it was clear and informative. Thank you for watching.